Hello and welcome back to DVD2. I'm Vince Danzioni and you're watching Making Money from Financial Spread Trading. We're just going to carry on exactly where we left off in DVD1. And in DVD2, we're going to go on with the presentation. I'm also going to go a little bit online onto the internet and use binary.com and also show you ShareScope as well, how I use it in action. All right, so in this section, what we're going to talk about now is shares, ETFs, exchange traded funds, and stock indices. And personally, this is where I see huge opportunities for you to make money, not just say in your home market, but worldwide. So you can spread bet shares, um, and such as the you know, shares in the FTSE 100, the FTSE 250, European shares, Australian shares, the Dow 30 shares, S&P 500, NASDAQ, and many others. That's why I'm so excited about the share market, because there's just so many opportunities. There's also something called exchange traded funds, or ETFs. And what an exchange traded fund is, it is like a wrapper and it's um, a basket. And inside the basket, you've got various shares. So for instance, a telecom ETF would have shares of telecom companies in there, an oil ETF, a real estate ETF. And what that does, it diversifies you um, a little. I'll show an example of a biotech ETF. Now, if you invest in one or two biotech shares and you happen to pick two bad biotech shares, then you could be in big trouble. But if you invest in a basket, an ETF of biotech shares, um, it spreads your risk much more. You can also get global exposure, even with just a spread betting account or just a normal US brokerage account or US. Um, you can trade shares in Russia, Spain, Brazil, India. And by going through an ETF, it's still listed in the US or a UK exchange. Um, much, much easier because, you know, to try and buy shares in India or Russia or Brazil for a um, you know, a small trader. It's not easy. But by going through an exchange traded fund, you can get exposure to that market. So we we'll carry on using the 21.6 trading system. Uh, it can be used on shares and ETFs. So everything I showed you for currencies and commodities works exactly the same here. We can also test different days. A lot of people with shares and ETFs might take a longer term view, a longer term trend as well. So we could look at, for instance, 100 and 200 days. Um, as I said, when we first started out, you might be running an ISA or a SIP, like a pension, where you're not want to be trading in and out of the market every uh, you know few days. Um, so you can use a longer term. We can also use things like ShareScope to filter out new highs and new lows. You know, when we want to buy strength, we want to sell weakness. A four-week high, which is roughly 20 days, 26-week high, or a 52-week high. Uh, and again, when I go into ShareScope, I'll show you how we do that. This is just a little. Um, mock-up of the best and worst exchange traded funds so far in 2013. Um, solar um, exchange traded funds, so inside that exchange traded fund are solar stocks. Um, Biotech, which has done very, very well. And then the worst shares so far have been the gold mining shares. And remember, that's not a problem because we can short these ETFs as well. So it's not a case, everything's got to go up. Here's an example of the Biotech ETF, which is um, US listed, listed on the NASDAQ. And as you can guess, it's got shares of biotech companies in there. And this is just a longer term moving average. It's 100 and 200 days. And you can see right now, there's a buy signal on that, uh, on that ETF. And of course, we don't have a sell signal yet. And it's still long. And in fact, I own this as we speak. Now, every exchange traded fund has a fact sheet. And that's the nice thing about the internet. If you put in biotech ETF, and this one's called the IBB, and want the fact sheet, you'll be able to get the fact sheet. Now, by the time you watch this, it may be slightly different because these percentages change all the time. But right now, if I buy this ETF, what is inside this ETF are all these shares. Now, of course, you can spread bet these shares individually, Amgen, Celgen, um, Gilead, Biogen, Alexon. They're all shares you can spread bet, but by using the exchange traded fund, we sort of, well, you know, we spread the risk, you know, all your eggs in one basket. When, what we've got in this case is, you know, we've got a basket of shares. Um, and these are the top 10 holdings in that particular ETF. So we can trade long or short, and again, shares and ETFs. We can use spread betting, you know, say stick to bigger shares, especially when you're first starting out. Um, I normally go with 100 million sterling um, or more because the smaller shares tend to be more volatile. The spreads, the difference between the buy and sell price tend to be quite wide. And remember the buy and sell price being wide, you need to jump quite a bit just to break even. Don't just think the US or UK, UK there's great opportunities in Russia, Far East. Uh, and I'll show you a couple of the 
overseas ETFs as well. Well, in fact, here's one now. This is Mexico. And again, you trade this through a spread betting company or you can just buy it through a US broker. And again, these are the shares that are in there. Um, and it's actually been doing quite well. Um, in fact, Mexico moves quite closely with the US. Now, this is the sort of stock you don't want to trade using my system um, because it's illiquid. If you see, it's like quite boxy. So, you know, you can't really get a moving average or get a trend on a share which is relatively small and doesn't trade very often. And when it's a share, there's certain bonds and other instruments. So when you see a chart that looks like this, it's not the sort of thing that you want to spread bet um, or trade because it's just, it's just not liquid enough. The Dow 30 shares is a good place to start. You know, many of you have heard of the Dow Jones Index. It's got 30 companies in there. They're all big companies and they're all quite easy to spread bet uh, and they're liquid. Remember, if there's a particular US share you find in ShareScope and then you go into IG Index and you see, oh, they're not offering it, it doesn't mean they won't do it. You know, pick up the phone and basically say, look, I want to trade XYZ. And many times they'll still quote your price. It's just that it's not necessarily in their system. Shares trade in cycles. You remember what I said earlier? We've got to have an expiry date. It's just, you know, there's got to be a contract. There's got to be an end date. Normally it's March, June, September and December are the cycles. Um, but remember, as it gets closer to the expiry date, um, you can roll over. So you close the current bet and you open the new bet. And the other thing is to say, you don't have to hold it. So even if you have a December 2014 trade, it doesn't mean you have to hold it all the way to December 2014 or December 2015. You can trade in pounds or euros, if that's your base currency, eliminating the currency risk. So let's say, for instance, IBM trades in dollars. It's $160 a share. And you say, well, I don't want to bet it in dollars. I want to bet it in pounds. You can. So even though the underlying share is in dollars, you can still trade it in pounds. It's tax-free um, if you're spread betting. If you're obviously trading through a normal broker, um, you still have your capital gains allowance as well. So um, currently it's around £11,000 in the UK. So that would still be tax-free. ShareScope, as I say, uh, plus has most US charts. Um, you can dice and slice the information any way you like. There's a massive amount of free data, especially in the US. And that's another reason why I want to push you more towards the US. Uh, the financialtrader.com, you have a password which came with your package uh, on the cover letter. If for any reason you lose it, send me an email and I'll uh, get a replacement. Um, you've got links there and updates that um, you, know, you can get data from, especially the US. Many companies, you know, people say, oh, I don't know much about America. Believe me, you walk down the high street in the UK or wherever you are in Spain uh, or Europe or Australia, you know the brands, Starbucks, Apple, McDonald's, Exxon, Microsoft, they're all US listed stocks. You know, you, so you know more probably about the US market than you really think um, you, know, you do. And I say, if I was starting out, I really would. I'd go straight to the US market. I'd start, go straight with the US shares because you've got more data, you've got more choice. And I don't know whether it's me, but I've always found that they've trended much better as well. Maybe they're more liquid than ETFs as well. So the FTSE 100 and the Dow are still very popular with private clients, yet most private clients don't make money. So that might be telling you something. Understand most indices are correlated. All right, what do I mean by that? Correlated means that if one market moves up, then the other market follows. For instance, the FTSE 100, the DAX, the Dow, the S&P 500, they're all stock indices, whereas gold or corn are not, yeah? So be careful when people are sort of just trading loads of indices, and really they're, they're trading the same thing, it's all correlated. Volatility is what causes most traders to lose money. Many times they've got the right idea, they know what they should be doing, but what happens is uh, they get thrown out by the volatility. That's where binary bets can sometimes help because you don't have to have a stop. So my advice to you is trade smaller. Give yourself a little bit more breathing space. Don't put yourself under pressure. A lot of traders, you know, what Jesse Livermore said earlier about they beat themselves up. Many times you're going to beat yourself up.